Hello, this is Julie. This is part three of the 3D decoupage design. This time I'm going to be starting with a flat image and make the cut. And it's, you'll see the finished product here. I have a base, then I have part of the inside design, then a center part here, and then another part. And these will all stack nicely with some pop dots to create a nice three-dimensional project once it's all done. It'll be a print and cut project with all of these pieces spread out and printed. And I'd like to show you how I got from the original design to this point using Make the Cut this is going to be a flat image as opposed to the first two that we used that were paper piecings that already had parts. So I started with Craft Artist 2 just to find a picture that was dimensional and I chose this flower which is just an embellishment in one of the kits. Drug it over here, resized it. It to select it, then I went to File, Export, Export as Picture. I clicked the 32 bit depth here so that I could get the transparent background. Selected 72 dpi and then PNG file. You could also export as SVG, but using Make the Cut, we don't need to use the SVG. If I were exporting this to any other software, I would export the SVG and the PNG file. Right, But for Make the Cut, I just need the PNG file. So I'll click on Export, give it a name, Flower, PNC Print and Cut 3, put it on my desktop. So then I'll move over to make the cut and we'll open a new project and I'll show you how I got those, how I got the flower in to make the cut. What I need to do anytime you have an image of any kind, in order to bring it in to make the cut, you have to use Pixel Trace, which is this center icon here or Control Shift T. Find the image that was flower PNC3 PNG and you see it on the preview window over here. Click open and the first way I want to bring it in is, is using an alpha channel. If I can, I'll click on apply changes. The alpha channel was produced by that transparent background that we chose and you'll notice that it gives me perfect lines around the design so that it's pretty brainless. So I'm going to click on Texturize Path and apply change so you can see that I'm bringing in the picture and to make the cut. So I'm going to click on Import. So I have that picture there but I want to continue tracing because I would like to get some of the inside detail here and in order to do that I'm going to use the regular pixel trace and leave the texturize option here and I'm going to move the threshold to about 100 to see what we get. What I want to bring in is some of these dark pieces here. I'm going to despeckle it to remove all tiny specks because I really don't want to mess with the tiny specks but I'm also going to click blackout path and apply to try to bring in the spaces. I want this whole shape to be solid. Can't really make this area solid because it's open up here at the top. By increasing that number I don't think it's going to change anything there. I could go up to 120, press enter or apply. It's not really changing anything except moving this piece up higher so I think I'll just stay with 100 
and apply and bring that in and then I'll do a little editing. So I click on import and I've finished with my tracing. So the piece that I just brought in is here. I really would like to fill in this little section here so I'm going to zoom in on this by typing number four and three. Number four takes it out to a zoom level of 300 and three centers the selected piece on the screen. What I want to do is get rid of this hole here. To do that I'm going to click on this little figure eight up in the left corner then click on the second arrow here and I want to select just a piece of this line by left clicking and hitting the delete key and I'm gonna left click here and hit the delete key maybe get rid of that little curvy thing I'm gonna click on the pen icon left click on a green dot and right click on another green dot and you see that I've closed up the shape and the closed shape has filled. Now I could just as well clean up any part of this that I want to. I can use the eraser um, holding, uh, I think I'll make this a one millimeter eraser. Hold the, sh the control key to make it straight and if there's any jaggy lines that I really don't like that make it uglier than what what I would prefer. I can get rid of some of those jaggies just using the eraser tool but part of these jagged lines are just uh, gonna add to the design so I really don't need to clean all of them up. I just want to get rid of some real sharp edges that might not cut smoothly. So you can clean up kind of as much as you want to or as little as you want to using eraser or breaking. Uh, but that's really all I'm going to do right now because this piece is going to be overlapped over here and it kind of gives the the effect of some of these veins on the flower. The next up uh, thing I'm going to do is get rid of these extra lines by clicking on break or control B at the bottom and just selecting those those lines that I broke and to get the next layer which would be the kind of the star shape thing I'm going to add a layer by clicking on the larger of the two green plus icons and again I'm going to zoom in real close on this shape and I found that it's most efficient just to click on the Bezier draw tool and quickly outline the basic shape that I'm trying to get for this next piece. So this is what we call hand tracing. It's a scary term but it's really not scary at all. It's left click, left click, left click and left click click. Now I'm going to bend those lines a little by clicking on the second arrow again and I'm just going to drag these over the light portion or any part that I want to include in this shape. Just bending the lines. Left click and drag to get the lines to go where I want them to go. And mostly I just want to get away from a flat star shape and have a little bit more curve to these lines. And when you're happy with that, then we're going to go back to the top selection arrow, left click on the shape, and send it to its own layer by clicking on the smaller, well it's already on its own layer. Um, but I want to move the layer down underneath the flower. I can't see it but it's still there. What I'm going to do is first make a copy of this by using control shift and drag. Now I'm going to select this shape plus the 
the star shape that's underneath it and join them. And now I'm going to use the layer, Control plus L, to separate the background from the shape that I just cut, and that's how I got the star shape. I still have this shape here, so I didn't lose it. But I want to use this shape, and I want to grab this center piece. Well, that's pretty close to a circle design, so I'm going to click on uh, Basic Shapes and type in CI to get the circle. Double click on the circle and resize it till it's about the size. I'm going to move it up a layer so I can see it. I want it to be about the right size to gather that center shape there. And you can make it whatever size you want. Now I'm going to move it back down underneath because for this procedure to work the smaller shape needs to be behind the larger shape. Then you click join, then you click on layer. Clicking on layer removes the, the shape and now we have all of our pieces and we got them each in a different way. They're ready to go. When we're going to print these, we want to add the registration marks and then print them with the registration marks. Put the printed paper with the marks on the mat, put it in the machine, and then go ahead and cut. And I'll show you the outlines. These are the cutting lines that the machine will make around the printed image and you know that you have perfect lines around them because the lines are are created exactly here. Now if you want to create bleed lines you could just in case your machine is off a little bit or not calibrated exactly right you can create a shadow layer for each one of these or you, uh, it could be an outset shadow or an inset. I prefer to cut slightly inside, so when I click on the shadow layer, I'm going to do a minus that'll give me an inset point, and I think maybe 02, and accept that. And that gives me a little line inside. So when I'm printing, I will print this, but when I'm cutting, I'll hide this and I'll cut these lines instead, slightly inside the printed lines. In order for my registration marks to work properly though, I need to have registration marks that will show on both layers or just a mark that will mark the inside of each. So I'll just draw a draw a left click and right click. I'll draw a little line there and left click and right click. I'll draw a little line here near the the outside edges of my design so that changing the size won't change the registration marks. I'll still have registration marks as big as the picture is. So when I'm ready to cut, I'm going to cut this layer. I'll hide the printing layer. When I print, I can hide the, I don't really have to hide this layer. I'm going to leave those lines on there and then use the print setup, print options to print registration marks, show paper on the mat, 
and select the registration marks that I want to use. If I'm using the Zing, I'm going to use Make the Cut registration marks. And I can see where my page outlines are now. So I'm going to make sure all of my design pieces are inside of that area. Now these pieces are all joined because they were outlined together, so I'll split them. The shadow layers. I can stack them perfectly by selecting them and typing S to stack. And I'll move this little mark over here. Doesn't really matter where that mark is so long as it's outside of the cutting area. And these got moved around so I'll select them and type S to stack them perfectly. And that really is all there is to it for making a 3D decoupage design in Make the Cut. It's very simple and straightforward. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.